Hey, it's Logan. So I've been studying Japanese for a while now, but I'm not always the most consistent. I passed the N3 level JLPT a year ago, and I haven't been studying as much as I used to, but I am trying to incorporate it into my routine in small ways. So here are some ideas of how to incorporate studying Japanese into your daily routine. If you're like me and have a bad habit of looking at your phone in the morning, I've found a way to make it productive by using an app for reading articles in Japanese. I've been using this one called Todai Japanese and I like it because it has a built-in dictionary so it makes it easy to learn new words and kanji. I try to read out loud when I can to get extra practice. One of my favorite habits of 2020 was using Wani Kani. It's the best way to study kanji. It works best if you use it every day. You might be able to tell that I haven't used it in a while because I have a lot of reviews to do, but I'm never giving up. It is paid, but it's so worth it. I think this is the only study tool I've paid for and it really helps to learn the radicals of each kanji and take it one step at a time. I think the best thing or my favorite thing that I did to learn Japanese and to really find improvements when I was in the earlier stages of studying was getting a language partner. So when I was first getting started with studying Japanese, I only studied it in a classroom setting and I mostly learned like grammar, vocabulary, and a little bit of writing. But it was hard for me to speak and I think getting a language partner was one of the best ways to help me get started with at least like trying to speak and getting a little bit of practice with speaking. I used um, the app italki and hello talk both of those are good places to meet language partners so you can look for someone who wants to learn your native language and who is a native speaker of the language you want to learn and then what i do is we meet on skype once a week and we do like 30 minutes in japanese and 30 minutes in english so we get we both get to practice and learn and over time if you find a language partner that really works for you it's kind of like a friendship i've been meeting one of my language partners for like maybe three years now and yeah it's really fun i think at the beginning i improved a lot from meeting with the language partner but as it goes on there's i realize there's a lot of vocabulary i'm missing and if i don't study that vocabulary i'm not really going to improve so it's um, it definitely takes work more than just like the time that you're meeting with your language partner But it's a great way to get more exposure to the language and have someone to help you out who's a native speaker Whenever I am Skyping with my language partner I usually have the gshow.org open on my computer It's a really good online dictionary for Japanese and English So if there's ever any words I'm not sure of I can look it up while I'm meeting with my language partner. Oh, I also wanted to mention that if you find a language partner and you meet with them online pretty often, then if you ever visit Japan or whatever country they live in, you can meet them in real life and it's really cool. You have like a local friend who speaks the language that you're learning. Yeah, so I met several of my language partners in real life and it was so Cool, it's really fun. When I was an English teacher in Japan, I had a lot of free time at work when I wasn't teaching classes. So I brought these JLPT workbooks with me to study every day. And even if it's just a little bit every day, it's still progress. It's 
been a long time since I practiced for the JLPT. Even when I took the JLPT, I don't think I was that prepared for it. Even though I did pass, I still want to go through these workbooks again and keep doing it because I have a lot to learn. Using recipes in Japanese. This is probably the most fun of all of these and I'm not actually sure if it counts as studying, but I love using CookPad, this Japanese recipe app, to look up recipes and make them. If there are ever things that I don't understand in the recipe, I just use Google Translate. This time I made kabocha soup. It was my first time making it and it was perfect. So this is a fun way to try and practice listening. Search on YouTube in Japanese for videos related to your interests. I watched this grocery haul video. Since it's a simple topic, I was able to understand a good amount. I'm curious if you're studying a language and how you incorporate that into your daily routine. And those are my tips that I have for including Japanese studying in your daily routine. As the year is ending, it's a great time to think about your habits in the past year and if you want to incorporate any language learning habits in 2021. Thanks for watching. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more videos like this. See you next time.